So this is my composition. I think I might end up cropping it a little bit, but I can wait till the end to do that just because I don't need all of that sky. And the focal point, the first thing I think is important is that you want your creature to be the focal point. So right now this celery is kind of catching too much light and is taking away from the focal point of here. So I can just simply crop my creature scape so that that celery isn't so noticeable in it. I can also do things like burn the celery's highlights down and change its color, color balance. But something like that is really showcasing my creature a little bit more clearly. Do you guys agree? So if I want the creature to be the focal point, sometimes you want to identify things that are getting too much attention. And you can either color correct them. I can still like color correct the salary a little bit. But now that I'm in the Proving Ground project, not my landscape anymore, I can just go ahead and crop it to get the best effect. Okay, so now if I'm going to get the lighting to match, I've posed it a little bit, right? What if I want to make this tail grow? Because I don't like this. This is called the tangency. It's a little floating sliver of mushroom in the mushroom lake, but it, it matches the angle of my tail too much. I want my tail to overlap it. So again, a little internal compositing if we don't use puppet warp. This is just doing puppet warp the, the long way. I'm going to select the tail. I'm going to duplicate it. Command J. I'm going to Control T and grow it. And move it down a little bit. So that it's overlapping. I can warp it. Right click within it. Warp it. Play with its arc. Make it a little bit wider and fluffier. Like so. Just nudge it ever so slightly to the left so it's overlapping that. You see? And then I need to get rid of that tail on the original. So I go back to the, not the smart object original. Remember, you can't s delete from smart objects. But from my raster of the full body, I just cut the tail off. Now I put that tail back on. I seam it together. I cut a little too much there, so let me be better about that. Go back in my history. And before I cut it off, let me make sure I have overlap. So I'm going to subtract from this selection. Okay, now I'll cut that off. Now I put the other tail back on. And now I can blend them using my compositing skills. Use a 100% large soft-edged eraser. Erase from here. And then erase a little bit from, whoops, wrong layer, from my tail layer. Come on, there we go. And I can take the opacity down on that eraser and blend it. So quick and easy. Just change the tail position. All these ways you can make the anatomy match. Okay, now I need to merge that tail back onto my character. And I do that by selecting both layers and then going to Layer, Merge Layers, or Command E. So now it's all in one layer. But that's all just the angling of the body. Now I gotta worry about the lighting. And the lighting seems like it matches pretty well on the top of my character's head, but it doesn't match on the back of my character too much. So we're going to learn something that's in the assignment. It's called non-destructive overlay editing, which is incredibly important for doing this kind of applied work. So I need to open it up. Here it is. So 
this is what a non-destructive overlay layer looks like. And I'm not going to require you to turn it in, but I require you to know how to use it. It's a layer that's filled with middle gray that you set to overlay mode. And overlay mode, like multiply mode, allows all the darks to come through. Overlay mode lets anything darker than 50% gray come through and lets anything lighter than 50% gray come through. But 50% gray is invisible. So what we do is we, we make something out of 50% gray, we set it to overlay, and then we dodge and burn that 50% gray. And what it will do is dodge and burn the thing underneath that layer without affecting those pixels. So it's called non-destructive. Let me demonstrate. If I want to change the lighting direction on my creature, I first make a duplicate of my creature silhouette. Then I double, double click to get the layer style. And then I can do a color overlay. And then I can say blend mode normal, opacity 100. But the color I want to select is middle gray, right there. OK, now I have a silhouette of my creature in gray. Then I'm going to right click on it. This is on a duplicate, remember, and I want to rasterize that layer style. So now I have a real middle gray. And what I like about doing it that way, rather than like selecting and filling it, is it matches the pixels exactly when you do a color overlay. So the pixels that are soft are left soft. But it's going to disappear now when I change it from normal mode to overlay mode. It's like it's not even there. But let me mark this as a color. Let's see, let's mark, mark it as purple. Now when I use the dodge and burn tools, just like I was using to correct my character, I'm going to use dodge. I'm going to do it less than 20% with a pressure sensitive brush. In the midtones with a large brush that's 0% hardness. This is what I recommend. And I can start painting the highlights. And I'm not actually affecting the pixels on my creature at all. And I'm not affecting the background at all. So if there's a lot of light on that leaf and that hand, I, I want to dodge it there in the midtones. Dodge it on that side of the face. Eh, don't want that. A little bit more on that part of the tail. And along the back. Okay, what I'm actually doing, if I turn that overlay mode to normal, is I'm doing this to that 50% gray. See how I'm lightening it? And all those highlights come through when I put it on overlay mode onto the layer underneath it. So this is without that, and this is with it. So this is a great way to edit the direction of your lighting on your creature within the picture space. Just like you can dodge it, you can also burn it and darken the shadows where you think they need. This is a great way to do cast shadows. Midtones, less than 20%, Pressure sensitive, large brush, 0% hardness. So if I want a little bit more shading underneath it. A little bit of shading on that as it's coming from behind this cabbage blossom. Now let's look at what that overlay layer actually looks like if I set it to normal. So now I have some darks on it and some lights. That's a non-destructive overlay layer because I have not hurt my original creature at all. I've just improved it by being able to adjust the lighting directly on top of it. Now, this last thing I'll show you is we can do that to the whole landscape as well. So I'm going to go behind my creature, behind my smart layer, create a new layer, say edit fill with gray. That's middle gray, normal 100%. There it is. I'm going to set that to overlay mode. 
Now that's underneath my creature and underneath that foreground flower, which is in front of my creature. But it overlaps everything else. So that means when I dodge and burn, let's start by burning. I'm going to burn the midtones. I'm going to make it even bigger. I can start to dodge the midtones in the background here. Maybe even dodge some of the highlights, especially on this celery. So it's less of a focal point. And it's not going to affect my creature at all. Sorry, I'm burning, not dodging. What does that look like when I put it to normal mode? Looks like that. And it is affecting the landscape behind. This is a great way to do shadows that your creature might be casting on its environment. Okay. Now, other things. I don't love the highlight of that celery there. So if I turn off, whoops, if I turn off my uh, overlay layer for the background, I should be still able to use auto select layer to select that celery layer. It looks like there's a few celery layers. So this is the big one here. And then if I need to, I can burn that directly as well. Because the overlay layer is limited to 50%. Because you're starting at 50% gray, you can only change the lights and darks by 50% before it just goes to black. And black on your overlay layer is not going to look like black. So sometimes you do need to still dodge and, and burn things directly. Or these mushrooms, I can select those. Because remember, this is your creature scape. You can make all these changes. And it can help inform you about how to improve your landscape, too. Come on. Select. And what I'm really going to play with um, is atmosphere and focus pools pretty soon. And then color adjustments, all that good stuff. The last thing I want to mess with this highlight on the salary. So it's really this one. And I'm going to burn that down. There we go. So now my creature is better highlighted, but there's so many colors around it. I can also use things like the sponge tool to desaturate things I think are too colorful. And I use it the same way, a flow of less than 20% because these are powerful tools. A large brush with 0% hardness. And I can gray out a little bit, take some of that saturation away from some of these background elements. about the mushrooms that's pretty colorful let's take a little bit of that color out so on and on you can use these things we've learned with compositing and color adjustment to improve your work but the thing that's going to be most helpful is the actual direct adjustments of your creature in your environment. So just like we've done countless times, you can play with the levels on your creature. You can play with the color balance. That's probably the most important. Starting with the midtones, let's make it match the color temperature of this environment. So there's a lot more red and warm light in this environment. I'm going to push the midtones brighter and warmer. I'm going to push the 